Well, good morning, people. It is Tuesday morning, and it is May 19th. Um, and uh, one last pitch. If you do have thoughts about uh, the, the church opening or not opening again yet for, for worship, uh, please make sure that you get a hold of uh, uh, Scott Crandall would be the first choice to, uh, to, to get a hold of myself or anybody on the Christian Council, or you could get a hold of Bill on Gate too. So uh, give us some feedback so we have some things to discuss this evening in our meeting. So, And I didn't mention, but Vicki was the first one on, and Gail's on already. Wow, I better behave. Uh, whoops. Um, anyway, um, we are continuing on in our discussion of the book of James, which is a book we, we dearly love. Um, and we're going on from verses, or we're still in the second chapter, we're in verses 8 to 13. We're going to tidy up this, this, this little bit about favoritism and kind of, a, this is a bit of a transitional block of scripture here, um, moving on from the, from the favor, not showing favoritism um, and moving on to the next parts of this, of this letter. Um, so let's go ahead and say a prayer for the day. And uh, then we're going to jump into James chapter 2, verses 8 through 13, if you want to find those in your Bible. Okay, let's say a quick prayer though first. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this this day. We thank you for the, the life-giving rain that we've enjoyed here recently, and we, we thank you for the crops that uh, seem to be doing well so far, and we just do as we have been, lift up prayer for the uh, for the farmers, for the, the supply chain issues will be straightened out and soon, and that the, those that are raising hogs and and cattle, and we'll have uh, markets for their for their livestock uh, without interruption. And we pray for the farmers with the crops in the field that it'll be a wonderful, wonderful growing season, and they'll have a wonderful crop, and that they will be uh, reimbursed justly for for their endeavors, and that they'll be able to be have a very profitable year in spite of all the chaos that's been going on in the world. And Lord, we do lift up a prayer for all those that are hurting this morning. Um, I do have an unspoken prayer for an individual that. I uh, was conversing with yesterday evening. Um, I do lift up their, their situation earnestly in prayer for you this morning. Uh, dear Lord, I ask for you to be there with them, comforting each and every one of them and guiding them and, and lifting them up, dear Lord. And we thank you for the, the ability to pray for each other. And Lord, let us uh, engage in that as, as frequently as we possibly can. Lord, we lift up prayers for all those that are shut in this morning and, and continue to be shut in and um, we seem to be growing weary, dear Lord, and many of us are, are getting irritated with one another, and um, there's a great dis, uh, discussion and, and disconnection between those that um, want to open and those that don't, and those that want to wear masks and those that don't, and all of these things, Lord, and please uh, comfort us and, and console us and, and, and moderate us that we might uh, be able to react and deal with each other in a loving fashion, dear Lord, for uh, that is what you ask of us, and um, that is what we wish we could we could accomplish on your behalf. Lord, we just lift all these prayers and so many more up to you this morning. Amen. Okie dokie. Um, as I said, chapter 2, 8 to 13. So let's get started. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. But if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty, for judgment will not excuse me, for judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy trumps triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Um, that's kind of the, media, the, the, whole, um, the whole lesson of Christ in a nutshell, isn't it? Um, so let's start back at verse 8 there. Um, again, he is talking about uh, referring back to this partiality that we've been talking about. The, the, there's potential specifically in the first part of the chapter talking about um, favoring the, the wealthy over those that are less well off. Um, and of course there is, uh, that is a problem because that causes division, doesn't it? Uh, and division is something we need to try to moderate and try to avoid 
Um, anytime we act in a fashion that causes division, we are we are certainly putting a stumbling block in the way of of someone else in their in their walk, and we don't want to do that. Um, this showing partiality, um, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. And what part, you know, part of the problem with when we look to uh, to the wealthy, we we elevate them as somehow being better than the rest, right? And somehow we begin to we begin begin to envy them, right? We that's a very real thing um, that we look to those that are affluent. And we have we can't help but have envy, or in other words, covet what they have. Uh, obviously, their lives must be so wonderful because they have this ability to, uh, to have these things, this big house, these nice cars, uh, take trips, what have you. We, we, we envy them and we covet that. So we, 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 we elevate them because we wish we could be at, at that level. Um, and that's a part of what the sin is, isn't it? Um, so it's covenanting in, in some ways. Um, and we're not supposed to do that. We are not supposed to show partiality. Showing partiality, James is telling us, is a sin. And then we come into that very difficult part of this. Um, the part that, that where he says that, you know, if you uh, commit one sin, you've committed them all. And he uses these harsh examples, murder and adultery. Um, wow. Uh, but surely my showing partiality it can't possibly be as bad as adultery or murder can it now well he's telling us that that's that yeah it is um and of course this kind of there's some remembrance here or some recollection here of of the the, the uh, beatitudes the sermon on the mount um perhaps more directly the sermon on the mount where he's talking about you love each other uh and love your neighbor as you love yourself uh and that if you if you look at this person in lust, it's just as much as if you'd committed adultery, as well as if you are angry with your brother, it's just like you killed them. So it, it's there is some um, resemblance or rem reminders here to me of Jesus's words, which isn't surprising if this is his little brother, is it? Uh, not surprising at all. Um, but so why in the world would it be that these, you know, that there's a, that, that, that uh, there isn't a hierarchy of sin? Why in the world would all sin be equal? What in the world do you mean by that? Certainly, mm -hmm. me doing this tiny little thing of having favoritism can't possibly be as bad as, as, as murder. Um, but James is teaching us that there is no hierarchy of sin. Sin is sin. All sin is bad. All sin leads to death. And to illustrate that, I'm going to try to use a, uh, an illustration. And I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with the story of the sword of Damocles. Uh, raise your hands if you are familiar with that story. Okay, I'm watching for hands out there. I don't see a lot of hands, but there's a reason for that. You're, you're there and I'm here. But the sword of Damocles is a parable, um, a moral mor morality parable, that was told um, by ancient people. It goes back quite a long time, uh, but Cicero, the Roman philosopher Cicero, um, made it more popular, or or his version of it became more popular. Um, and it and it is a story that, that even though it's a, not a Christian story, there is some morality teaching to it, and we can use it and modify it a little bit for an illustration here. And in this story, uh, Damocles. Um, is a one of the members of the court of the king of, uh, and I believe the king was of Cyprus. I believe if I remember right. Uh, I think so, or Syracuse. Syracuse. I think it's Syracuse. Um, the king of Syracuse. And at any rate, the king is a is a wrathful king, but but Damocles looks at him and says, like, "Wow, his life is so easy. Um, he has no problems, no worries. Uh, I wish." And he starts flattering the king, telling him, "I wish I." Could. You know, my life could be as easy as yours, and you are blah blah blah, and, and all of these things. So the king says, "Okay, I give you a deal. I'll make you a deal. Come on up here for for a day or a week or whatever period it was. I don't remember that part of the story. It's been a long time since I've heard the story. Um, but come up here, and you can be like the king. I'll tell the servants to wait on you, to feed you the same food, and to treat you the same way as if you yourself were king. Sit on the throne." 
So Damocles comes up there and, and, the, and the, the most beautiful servant girls are out and they're feeding him the most lavish food and they're put, put lavish clothes on him and they're treating him just like the king. He's being treated like the king and, and this is just amazing. And then he happens to look up and he sees this huge sharp sword hanging directly over his head and it's suspended by a horse, single horse hair. Um, and it's dangling above his head. And all of a sudden, he can't think of anything else but that sword that the hair could break at any moment, and he's going to perish. Uh, that's going to come down and kill him. So the, the part of the moral of that story is that, you know, you might think that, ever, that this person, his life is easy, but the, but the king, the king's life hangs by a thread all the time because if he makes a bad decision, people could revolt all of that morality teaching there. Um, but he's suddenly focusing on that sword. Now I'm going to modify that a little bit and we'll replace, we'll, we'll, we'll just for, for um, illustration purpose, let's replace the sword with a crushing weight. Okay, that's going to crush you and kill you. Um, and we'll replace that single horsehair with a link, linked chain. Okay, now given that we like to, we wish to think of sin as being, you know, not, this is a little sin, okay, and this one's a big sin. Uh, so we want to we want to differentiate, don't we? We want to have that hierarchy. We really want that hierarchy of, of sin. So okay, let's I'll, well let's indulge ourselves and have that hierarchy of sin. Um, so a little sin is a little link, and a bigger sin is a bit a little bigger link, and then murder is a really big heavy link, and we spend this weight from this varied size link chain. And what's the, what's the end result of all of that? Um, does it really matter which link fails and causes that weight to crush you? No, it doesn't matter at all which one of those links busts and separates and causes that crushing weight to come down and kill you. It does not matter. They're all the same. Breaking one is death. And it's talking about spiritual death, not, of course, physical death in this illustration. Uh, so if, you, if it's real, you, if it, we're talking about a real illustration, you would die, okay? But that's the spiritual death. And that's the way that we have to realize what we perceive as being a small sin is just another link in the chain. And one link is just like the next. And the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Let's not be the weak link in the body of Christ today. Let's try to do our part to avoid all of those things. And let's start off by following the teaching of James here and what he's focusing on thus far in chapter 2 and avoiding partiality and prejudging others. All right. With that, I'm going to let you go and have a very blessed day. Enjoy the day. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll pick up at verse 14 and kind of get into the part that, that uh, Martin Luther didn't like. Hey, I see Lisa Larson popped on here today. Lisa was one of the singers at, uh, at the, the Sun Celebration. God bless you, Lisa, for stopping in. Um, and so hopefully someday the world will be straight again and we can have another Sun Celebration. Won't that be wonderful? Um, any rate. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, we'll see you all in the morning, 9 o'clock. Right? God bless and be a blessing to someone today. Bye-bye.